In this lesson, we're going to get a little bit further into ionic bonds, and what we're going to see is that molecules can actually become charged, and not all metals always form the same ion. So we're going to start with polyatomic ions. Now, if we just look at the word poly, poly means many, and so many atom ions. So we're going to have a single ion made up of multiple different atoms. So it's a group of covalently bonded atoms that can act as a single ion. Now, a very common example of this is NH4. Uh, and NH4 has a one plus charge, so it's written NH4 plus. And what sh we should wonder right away is how in the world did we get four hydrogen atoms stuck to a nitrogen atom? Because nitrogen, if you look at its uh, electron dot diagram, only has three unpaired electrons. So we think it oh, can only make three bonds. And it would be perfectly happy to share an electron with hydrogen, and be perfectly happy to share an electron with hydrogen, and be perfectly happy to share an electron with hydrogen. But now, two, four, six, eight, every nitrogen atom in that compound has eight valence electrons, it's happy. Hydrogen has its two, it looks like helium, it's happy. How do I get a fourth hydrogen atom on here? Well, hydrogen only has one valence electron. And remember, it's trying to look like helium, which has two valence electrons. It's gotta fill that first energy level. If hydrogen's present here, it can actually look at that and go, wait a minute. If I could get rid of my electron, then I could come hang out right here and I could share these two electrons with nitrogen and then nitrogen still has eight and I have two as well. Well, that can happen. That frees up an electron over here and that leaves my hydrogen with a positive charge. And so this NH4 happens because this hydrogen gave away an electron, sticks to that nitrogen, and the whole thing ends up slightly positive. The electrons are shared pretty much equally everywhere, uh, but because we have one extra proton than electron, this thing has an overall positive charge. So we have many atoms covalently bonded together, but the whole thing, that whole molecule, has a positive charge. So this thing is a polyatomic ion. And if we can recognize these in our next unit when we deal with chemical reactions, it will be easier for us to see what's going on. We're gonna give the names and formulas of a few polyatomic ions. I'm not gonna look at how each one of these forms. These are just a very few that you should definitely be familiar with. You will have a list of a whole bunch more. Now, ammonium was the one I was just looking at, and it's NH4 with a one plus charge. Hydroxide is OH with a one minus charge. Um, you'll notice when it's a one plus or one minus, we don't write the ones, but if it's got more than one as a charge, then we will. Nitrate is a very common polyatomic ion. It's NO3 with a one minus charge. The only positive polyatomic ion that we see is basically ammonium. The rest of these are negative. Carbonate is CO3, and it has a two minus charge. Sulfate also has a two minus charge. It's SO4 with a two minus charge. And then phosphate has a three minus charge, so it's PO4 with a three minus charge. So we treat these just like ions, but there's multiple things in them. Now, if we have a compound that contains a polyatomic ion, it's an ionic compound because it's got ions in it, and it obeys all the same rules as before, as in the cation comes first, and um, the ending of, of the second element, if it's an element, will change to IDE. But if it's a polyatomic ion, we already know it's an ion, and we do not change its ending. So be careful with that. NH4 is ammonium, fluoride. We still change the ending to IDE, but this is calcium carbonate. We do not change the ending of carbonate to anything else. Uh, a lot of people want to change this to an A or an I. Don't do that. If it's an I, leave it an I. If it's an A, leave it an A. Changing the ending actually changes what you have. And then this is lithium nitrate. So be careful with your endings because lithium nitrate is not the same thing as lithium nitrite. If you change that to ITE, you'd actually be talking about the compound LiNO2. Uh, and it does exist, but it's not the same thing as lithium nitrate. Uh, so be careful when you're dealing with your names. I will be looking at those. Now, let's go ahead and practice uh, using a name to come up with a formula. Aluminum, if you look at the periodic table, has a charge of three plus when it's an ion. Aluminum ion is three plus, it's got three valence electrons. Sulfate is SO4 and it has a two minus charge. Now we don't actually wanna show the transfer of electrons here. We just want the ratio where these things are going to work out to be equal. So remember, we can just cross our charges. So that's aluminum and we're gonna need two of them. And sulfate, SO4, that is one sulfate ion 
we need three of them. So you'll notice I just put it in parentheses. The parentheses tells me sulfate is one ion, and the three outside of it tells me I have three sulfate ions. So parentheses in science class work a lot like parentheses in math class. It shows me this inside thing that's important. We're keeping it together. Uh, magnesium, Mg, has a two plus charge. Nitrate, NO3, is a one minus ion. So again, we're going to cross our charges and we're going to see we need one magnesium for every two NO3s. So the NO3 is one ion and we need two of them. Calcium phosphate, calcium is a two plus ion. Phosphate, PO4, is a three minus ion. So we're going to have CA3, PO4, two. So be careful with your charges, but you can cross them. It's not too difficult.